All right, beautiful. Thank you for joining me for a 60 minute yoga class. My name is Holly. My pronouns are she, her. This is going to be a floor based yin yoga class. Um, you'll want a yoga mat or a carpeted area, and you might want a pillow or a blanket or two. You don't need any fancy yoga props, but if you have a like a pillow from your couch or a blanket, um, that can be helpful for this class. In yin yoga, we will hold postures for three to five minutes to help us work not just into muscle tightness, but into uh, deep tissue, connective tissue, joints, tendons, ligaments. Um, and in general, yin yoga, you want to go slow because we're holding postures for long periods of time. You don't need to push yourself to the, um, you know, all the way to the limit or to the extent that your body can move. A little bit goes a long way. So we're going to start on our backs laying down. Um, and if you'd like to place a blanket, you know, underneath your head or under your legs or under your lower back, you're welcome to do so. This is going to be both a fun and relaxing yin yoga class today. All right. And as you make your way onto your back, let your feet and hands be heavy. You're welcome to close your eyes or do a soft, fuzzy gaze just beyond the tip of your nose. Take a slow inhale through your nose. And then an even slower exhale. You can exhale through the nose or through the mouth, whichever feels right for you. Just let your exhale be a little longer than the inhale. So inhale through the nose. Then you can exhale through the nose or the mouth, just making the exhale a little bit longer than the inhale. And just do that for another minute or two. Breathing in, feel the body rise. And as you breathe out a little bit slower, just feeling your navel come towards your spine. Inhale, feeling the ribs gently expand. And slowly exhale, feel the ribs gently contract. On the breath in, noticing the temperature of air coming into your nostrils. On the breath out, notice the temperature of air coming out of your nostrils or your mouth. Maybe a little bit warmer, a reminder that we are very alive, 90 something degrees. Inhale. Slowly exhale. And by exhaling for longer than we inhale, we start to observe our breath. We give our mind something to focus on that's really rooted in the here and now. And we also bring the body into the parasympathetic nervous system response, telling the body that there's no need to fight, flight, freeze, or fawn. Just taking a few more intentional breaths here with an easy, slow exhale. Notice where you might be holding on to tension in your body. Let it go through the exhale breath. Shoulders get a little softer. Hands and feet a little heavier. So this is your home base, right? You can always return to this uh, puddle pose or savasana at any point during class. We're going to start with banana pose, bananasana, where we make a banana shape with our body. You can picture 
Your favorite uh, type of banana it can be perfectly yellow, it can be a little green or even brew, uh, brown and bruised. Uh, it could be organic, fair trade, could be from you know a place that you've been to or maybe somewhere you wanna go one day. We're gonna make that shape with our body. Um, you're welcome to remove any pillow that you have under your head or your knees or your back unless that um, helps you in this shape. So bring your feet close together, arms overhead, can take a moment to stretch up and down like you're having a nice yawn. And then start to walk your hands and your feet to the right side of your mat so that from a bird's eye view, your body makes a banana shape. You are welcome to cross your left leg over your right leg for an IT band stretch. You can also cross your left hand over your right hand for a little bit more of a shoulder opener. You can have the back of your head on the floor or you can roll your head a little to the right so that your right ear comes down towards the floor. And we're gonna hold here for five minutes. So there's three um, basic rules to yin yoga and they're very simple. You make a shape, you hold a shape, and you breathe. That's it, right? And because we're holding postures for longer, do about 70% of what you think you should be doing. If we were holding this posture for one minute, I might encourage you to bring your hands and feet as far to the right side of the room as you can. But in this, right, because we're holding for longer, you, just, you can do a little bit less and you'll get actually a deeper stretch over time. In yin yoga, sometimes things can get a little bit uncomfortable and that's okay. Um, but you're never going to a point of pain, a point where something uh, does not feel right in your body. So if you ever need to adjust what you're doing, maybe grab a prop or just make the posture a little less intense, just remember that you are your greatest teacher in this class. And especially, especially in yin yoga, right, we don't all have to be making the same shape. So our, you know, our side stretch here can look different per person, right? Just a little bit goes a long way. You're welcome again to close your eyes or have your eyes like a tenth open. Try not to fidget. Just give yourself permission to be still and relax. All you have to do is breathe. your body's moving a lot or your mind is wandering a lot, you can just return your thoughts towards your breath. And you can always make your exhale a little bit longer than the inhale like we practiced at the beginning of class. And again, that just helps to soothe the body and the mind and give the mind something to focus on. So you can really just start to relax a little bit deeper into the posture.
We'll take another minute in the posture. You're welcome to stay just as you are, knowing that the end is near. Um, or if you do want a deeper stretch at the end, you can walk your hands and feet a little bit closer to the right side of the room, just getting a deeper stretch along the left side body. Inhale. Slowly exhale, letting go of any lingering tension in the body. When we hold postures for long periods of time, we want to be extra mindful of how we come out of them. Um, so there's no rush here. If your head is rolled to the right, you can slowly roll the back of your head to the floor. If your hands are crossed, you can uncross the hands. Slowly uncross left foot from right foot if those were crossed. And then take your time walking your hands and feet back to the center of your mat. You can do any motions that feel good with your body here. A little spine twist or windshield wiper on your legs, stretching out your arms. And then we're going to come back into our puddle pose, which is what yin yogis call savasana. So you can open your arms and legs as much as you'd like and kind of be like a rain puddle. Um, if lying on your back with your legs straight does not feel good to the lower back, you're welcome to place a small pillow or blanket underneath your lower lumbar spine. And or you can bend your legs so that your feet are on the floor and just let your knees rest together. And this will also take pressure off of the back. So especially when we hold postures for long periods of time, we just want to give our body some time to reset after. So in banana pose, right, we stretched one side of the body, compressed one side of the body, and we bent our spine as well. So now we're just letting our shoulders relax, right, our legs soften, and the spine lengthen and realign. Let's do the other side of our banana pose, bringing the feet close together, legs long, arms overhead. Again, you can kind of flex your toes back and stretch out your body if that feels good. And then start to walk your hands and your feet to the left side of the room, stretching the right side body. Um, now, for the sake of symmetry, right, if you cross one foot on top of the other on the other side, on this side, you, want, you might want to cross your right foot on top of the left foot, for example, or cross the hands or roll the head. However, we're not symmetrical, and this side might necessitate a different shape, right? So maybe on one side, crossing the foot is accessible and not on this side, that's totally okay. Um, maybe having both arms overhead is like too much on the shoulders. You could always bend your arms and catch elbows and or bring one or both of your hands down close to your body. Um, so just making this shape your own. And again, you can keep the back of your head on the floor or roll your left ear down towards the floor and we will hold here for five minutes. Let this be some time just to relax, to feel your body move with your breath. We'll also allow this to be some time just to set aside the day, right? Any worries or concerns, anything with work or friends or family or partners or something that's coming up later this week or that happened last week, right? This is a time just to 
let all of that go. You're not ignoring it, right? Or pretending it doesn't exist. You're just allowing it to pass, allowing any thoughts or feelings to pass. I often find that, you know, when we step back from a problem or a worry or a care, we come back with renewed compassion, creativity, vision. So to step back isn't like we're giving up or, you know, pretending that a problem doesn't exist. It just means we're taking a little bit of time for ourselves. And yoga, especially, you know, really slow, gentle yoga like yin yoga is a, a wonderful opportunity just to step back and give yourself permission to breathe. We're halfway through the posture. If the shape that you're making, you know, feels too intense or you don't feel anything at all, you're welcome to adjust your shape or grab, you know, a prop or a pillow or a blanket if that would feel better. And just make your way back into stillness and try not to fidget. Don't be hard on yourself if you notice that you are moving around, right? Just observe that and passionately return yourself to a little bit of stillness and breath. For the one minute left in the posture, you're welcome to stay just as you are, knowing that we're almost to the end. Or if you'd like a deeper stretch, you can walk your hands and feet further to the left side of the room, stretching and opening through the right side body a little bit more towards the end. And inhale through your nose, feel your body rise. Exhale, letting anything you'd like to let go of through the exhale breath. We're gonna start to slowly and intentionally work our way out of the posture. If your head is rolled to the left, slowly roll your head back so the back of your head is on the floor. If your hands are crossed, you can uncross the hands. Your right leg is crossed on top of left foot, right? Uncross the feet. And then at your own pace, walk your hands and feet back to the center line of your mat. Again, making any shapes that feel good to your body. And then returning to your puddle pose. Again, either with legs straight or legs bent and feet on the floor. You can open your um, arms and legs as much as you'd like.
Bend your legs if they're not already so your feet are on the floor. Bring your knees, feet close together. Lift your feet off the floor. Hug your thighs in towards your chest. You can place your hands on your shins. If it feels good, rock right and left. Just kind of rolling out your spine here. Good, and then stop in the middle. We're gonna do happy baby. So flex your toes back towards your face. Keep your knees bent, open your knees. Um, and see if you can catch the outsides of your feet with your hands. So I like to grab the outsides of my feet with my hands, but have my elbows inside of the knees. This is one option. Another option is to um, grab the backs of your hamstrings, your knees with elbows on the floor. Or another option would be to let go of your legs entirely. Knees can stay bent, or you can even kind of straighten them if you'd like. We're going to hold here for five minutes as well, but at the halfway point, I will provide um, a second option for people looking to take um, a different version of this hip opener. So happy baby is um, named <laughs> because if you you've, if you have any babies in your life or you've ever had a baby in your life, um, they often like to do the shape with their body, which is cute. Um, it's a great hip opener. Um, and it's it's a nice way just to kind of um, lengthen your spine, right? So having your head, your neck, your shoulders, middle back, lower back on the floor. You know, usually in yin yoga, we want to hold still, but from time to time here, if it feels good for you to kind of rock right and left a little bit to massage the back, you're welcome to do that. And then just kind of make your way back into stillness. And you don't need to get the deepest hip opener ever because we're holding this for a while. Too much is too much, right? Do about 70% of what you think you should be doing. So it's okay to feel a stretch, but not going to a point of pain, a point where you're holding your breath or something feels like, I don't know, like it might tear or sprain, right? We don't want to go there. So we're nearing the halfway part of happy baby. You are welcome to stay in happy baby for the second half, or you can join me in um, a different hip opener called Malasana Garland Pose. If you'd like to join me for that, you're gonna release any grip that you have on your legs or the backs of your feet. Slowly bring your knees and feet together. Again, you can roll right and left. And then when you're ready, you're just gonna roll to the right and take your time pressing yourself up into a seated position. Um, okay, this is the first time that we're sitting up for a while, so take that easy. And if you'd like to join me in Malasana Garland pose, um, I'm going to show you from a standing position how to get into it. Super flexy people can do it from um, seated, but from standing, you're gonna bring your heels in and your toes out, so your feet are anywhere from one to three feet apart. You're going to put your hands on the floor and slowly come down. Now, depending on the proportion of your body, for me, a smaller step helps, but for some people, they want their feet like three feet apart. Your, if your heels are off the floor, you are welcome to place pillows or blankets underneath your heels so that there's support there. Ooh, my hair is funny right now. Um, or you can always go back into happy baby if that is speaking to you instead. And again, just remember for my body proportions, a smaller step helps, but for you, you might wanna have your feet much wider apart. So keep that in mind. If your heels are on the floor, think about bringing your tailbone down and your chest up. And if you'd like, you can even bring your palms together and press the elbows out. Um, if, so again, this is called garland pose. Malasana is the uh, Sanskrit name. 
It's sometimes called a yoga squat. It's really, it's a great hip opener. It's also good for people that menstruate, good for blood flow. Um, but if, if this is un inaccessible to you, but you'd like to get there one day, happy baby pose is a really good place to start, right? Because it's the same idea. It's just we're on our backs rather than our feet. So there's less pressure on the hips and knees. We're holding here for one more minute. Okay, take a slow inhale through your nose. And a slow exhale through your nose. If you're in happy baby pose, right, you can release the grip from your feet or the backs of your legs. You can slowly bring your knees, feet back together, rocking back and forth or side to side or making any other motion that feels good with your body. If you're in garland pose, you can place your hands back on the floor and gently lift your hips up, turn your toes back forward. Again, you can make any other shapes that feel good with your body. I'm lifting my hips up, straightening my legs, moving my hips. And then when you're ready, you're just gonna make your way back onto your back, into your couple pose. Whew. And sometimes the release from a posture can be as intense as the posture itself. And that was a big hip opener and we held for a while. Many of us carry um, tension in our hips or even some like, you know, emotional pain or, or something like that. So sometimes when we do hip openers, um, it really starts to release some of that built up tension uh, in the body. And that can come out in a variety of ways, can come out with the desire to, let, or like the urge, involuntary urge to like cry or to laugh. Um, it can feel like a temperature change um could feel like dizziness or nausea you might just notice you're really feeling a certain part of your body right now like my stomach feels activated right now these things are all normal again sometimes when we start to release tension from the front of the body especially as we're coming out of winter and moving into spring it can feel kind of intense and that's okay right just a little bit goes a long way I usually like to breathe through the nose in yoga um, because it helps keep the body oxygenated. And it's also, again, brings the body into a parasympathetic nervous response. But sometimes it can also feel meaningful to like exhale through the mouth. So from time to time, right, if you want to just kind of like let everything go through a mouth exhale, you're welcome to do so. Sometimes that's just a nice way to release some stuff. Okay, you're gonna bend your legs if they're not already, roll to one side, and then keep rolling onto your abdomen for our back bend, which is called Sphinx Pose. So lying on your stomach, picture in your mind's eye your favorite Sphinx. It can be in Egypt, in Las Vegas, it can be in Harry Potter book four, and we're going to make that shape with our body. So you can open your feet, you know, hip width distance or even a little bit wider than your hips. Just make sure that your feet are not like wider than your mat. From here, you're gonna bend your arms so that your arms are about shoulder width distance, palms facing down. Now you're welcome to have your elbows underneath your shoulders. Um, and this is a pretty deep back bend. You're also welcome to walk your hands forward, which will lessen the pressure on the spine. Um, if lying on your stomach does not feel good for your body, couple options. You can place a pillow underneath your upper thighs so that your stomach hangs um, off without putting pressure on the abdomen. Or you can take a back bend on your back with a pillow underneath the lower back 
or a pillow under your head. So now you're still getting that compression, um, healing compression of the spine and gentle extension to the front of your body. If you are in Sphinx pose, um, you want to activate the arms a little bit so that your shoulders stay out of your ears. In general, with yin yoga, we want to relax muscles in the body, but in some postures, there's certain parts of the body that need to stay activated. So really press down through your elbows, forearms, and palms so that the neck can stay long and the shoulders stay out of the ears. And we're going to hold here for uh, two more minutes. So particularly in a world where we tend to hunch forward a lot, right? This is a great way to heal the spine through compression. And we're also stretching the fascia across our chest. Remember that you want to be doing about 70% of what you think you should be doing. So again, you don't need the deepest back bend of all time because we're holding here for a total of three minutes. the shoulders out of the ears, jaw relax. In the last 30 seconds of the posture, you're welcome to stay here in Sphinx pose. You can also take this into seal pose. Spread your fingers wide, press your knuckles down, palms down, and straighten your arms. Now we're just increasing the back bend at the end. Take an inhale through your nose. Let it go. Exhale. Slowly bend your elbows if they were straight and then lower down. You're welcome to turn and lie on your back or you can take a belly savasana here. Um, if you want to take a pedal pose on your abdomen, you can bend your elbows out and your hands in and have your forehead on your mat. Or you can look to one side so that one ear is on the mat. You're also welcome to have your arms down with your palms facing up. Send deep belly breaths in and out through your nose to massage the front of your body. Breathe deep into any point of tension. Let the floor hold you up. If you're lying on your stomach and you're looking to one side, you can gently lift your head and look to the other side. We're going to start to wake, make our way into a seated position. So if you're on your stomach, you can lift your head, look forward, place your hands under your shoulders and slowly press yourself up into a kneeling position. And if you're on your back, you can roll up to off to one side and then slowly press yourself up. After that spinal compression, we're going to stretch out our spine with a child's pose. Um, bring your knees and feet close together. There's a wide-legged child's pose where the knees are apart, but for today, we're gonna have our knees and feet close together. If your hips are not touching your heels, you're welcome to place pillows or blankets in between your calves and thighs so that um, there is some support there. And if you have tight toes, ankles, or knees, you're also welcome to roll up your mat or place a thin blanket underneath any delicate joints in your body so that there's extra support there. And from here, you're gonna put your hands on the floor and just walk your arms forward and bring your head down. You can also place um, a pillow or blanket under your forehead so that it can rest down. And if having your arms forward it does not feel good for your shoulders, Another option is to have your arms down by your side, palms facing up in what's called fetal pose. And we're gonna hold here for three minutes. It's a great way to stretch out the back, lengthening from the lower, middle, upper back through the shoulders and neck. 
And as you inhale, right, you can really focus on expanding the ribs. And as you exhale, let the ribs gently contract so that your breath almost becomes a massage, right? Like you're stretching out the body. At the same time, we're for sure stretching out through the toes, ankles, knees, hips, where a lot of us carry tension. Again, if you need to grab a prop or switch up your shapes so that the uh, posture does not feel too intense, you're welcome to do so. It's okay to be a little bit uncomfortable, right? But we're not going to a point of pain ever, ever, ever. We have about one minute left. Take an inhale through your nose. Exhale. Just relaxing just a little bit more into the posture at the end. Slowly lift your head and look forward. Walk your hands underneath your shoulders and press yourself up into a seated position. You can make any other shapes of your body that feel good. I like to bring my hands behind me and do a little back bend. Maybe coming into a tabletop position and kind of straightening one leg whew, and then straightening the other. So we're going to take another puddle pose. Um, you're welcome to lie on your abdomen again or on your back. Yogi's choice. Just let that posture go again. You might notice a change in temperature in the feet, for example, as more circulation returns to the lower part of the body or like a tingling feeling in your knees or your calves. You might feel the spine reset or you might feel nothing at all. Sometimes, you know, the language we use around yoga is like that you're feeling something really intense in every posture and like you don't have to. In fact, sometimes it's more effective to get just like a very subtle stretch to the body, right? Like. I really believe in, in subtlety and gentleness in yoga. If you're on your abdomen and you're looking to one side, you can lift your head and look to the other side, stretching the other side of the neck and shoulder. If you're on your abdomen, stay on your abdomen. If you're on your back, you're going to roll over so that you're on your abdomen. Um, and our next posture is called open wing pose. It's a, um, a shoulder opener. Um, I'm going to show you so that you can see my hands, which means that at one point my head will be facing away from you, but hopefully you can still hear me. For this posture, I like to have a pillow nearby to put under my head. Okay, so um, identify lefts and rights. I'm going to teach this from the left side. So you're gonna bring your left arm out to the left, palm faces down. You can have your wrist in line with your shoulder. You can also have the arm higher so that your hand is um, more at like a Y or a V than a T. From here, again, if your left hand is out, you're gonna to look to the right, left ear comes down, place your right hand on the floor outside of right shoulder and start to roll onto your left side body. You are welcome to bend your right leg so that your right foot is on the floor on either side of your left leg. 
And again, you can play around with how high you want uh, your left hand. Again, left hand can be in line with left shoulder or a little higher. Could bend the arm. You can keep your right hand on the floor close to the shoulder. Or if you'd like, you can reach your right hand behind you and eventually interlace your fingers behind you. Does not have to be today or tomorrow. We're gonna hold here for three minutes. Um, one option is to have the right hip stack on top of the left hip. But another option is to really um, bend the right knee and keep the right knee on the floor, right leg on the floor, so that you're not stacking the hips. And this is just a more subtle option, right? So that you're not opening the shoulder too much. So again, you can always bring your abdomen down towards the floor to decrease the shoulder opener, or you can stack the hips to increase the shoulder opener. holding here for one more minute. Inhale and exhale, getting a little heavier. You're gonna slowly start to roll back onto your abdomen. There's no rush, please take your time. And bend both arms, having them close to your face or have your arms down. Um, if you have a pillow under your head and that feels good, you can keep it there or you can remove the pillow. And if lying on your abdomen does not feel good, you're always welcome to roll onto your back. Puddle pose. you're looking to one side on your abdomen, you can lift your head and look to the other side. Okay. If you are on your back, you can roll back onto your front <laughs> for our other side of open wing, keeping in mind that this side might feel quite different. So if you did the left side on the other side, you're going to take your right arm out to the right. You can have your um, arm perpendicular to your body or have your arm higher up. You're going to have your left hand close to left shoulder and start to roll to the roll your left hip on top of your right hip. And again, lots of options here. You can Keep your leg on the floor and have your abdomen more facing the floor. You can stack the hips one on top of the other and have your left leg in front or in back. And eventually you could even reach your left hand behind you and clasp hands behind you. 
um, and particularly with joints like shoulders and knees, those are the joints that we're often like the least symmetrical in. Uh, and you might know why that is. For example, I always carry my purse on my right shoulder. And so my right shoulder is significantly tighter than my left shoulder. Uh, you might know why one shoulder is tighter than the other, or you might just be realizing right now, like, oh yeah, right shoulder really tight today. So again, you can lessen the stretch by um, bringing your torso down towards the floor or you can deepen the stretch by having the hips stack one on top of the other. We're gonna hold here for three minutes. We're already two, uh, one minute in. If you're having to like hold your breath or like hold your muscles to stay in the posture, you've probably gone a little bit too far, right? You just wanna relax into the posture, melt into the floor, some styles of yoga, right? We contract muscles to get into posture, especially like when we're balancing on a leg or an arm. Um, but in yin yoga, right, where we're not balancing, we're really just relaxing, melting into the posture. Focus more on what you can do than what you cannot do. And sometimes all we can do is breathe. And that's a really beautiful place to be too. I teach like a 20 minute yoga class to my church on Tuesdays on Zoom. And um, it's like very all ages. And there's this older woman who sometimes just comes and she just sits and she breathes the whole time. And she's like, I hope it's okay. I just really like breathing, you know, like intentionally breathing. And I'm always like, I could kiss your forehead if we were, if we were in real life. Like, I wish all of my yoga students had that, had that attitude of like, I'm just going to show up and breathe and, and know that even that helps. Right. So, um, <laughs> you can, you can be like my 80 something year old friend and sometimes just show up and breathe. And, and that can be your yoga practice for a day. And that's a great place to be as well. Holding here for one more minute. Take a slow inhale, easy exhale. Great. You're going to slowly start to roll your torso back down towards the floor. You can look forward. I'm going to lie on my back after so much tummy time. You're welcome to lie on your abdomen or at your leisure, roll onto your back and puddle pose or any other sort of like neutral shape that feels good to your body. Okay. Bend your legs if they're not already. Knees, feet close together. You can lift your feet off the floor. Or maybe grab your shins. Again, you can roll right and left, kind of rolling out the back. Um, our final posture is going to be a spine twist that we can take into another fun posture called cat pulling its own tail, which, which is just an adorable <laughs> name for a yoga posture. Um, but you're going to start simply by rolling to the right so that your hips stack one on top of the other. You can bend, uh, try to keep your left shoulder on the floor. You can bend your arms, cactusing them like goalposts, or you can have your arms out to either side. 
And we're going to start here um, with the hips stacked and the legs stacked, uh, holding here for one minute, and then we can hold here for longer and or transition into cat pulling its own tail. That was a nice little spine twist, an abdominal wall twist, especially during seasonal transitions when it's hot and then it's cold and then it's rainy and then it's windy and then, and then there's allergies, right? Our digestion can get really confused. Um, and so subtle abdominal wall spine twists like this are not just good for back health, they're also good for um, digestion. And yoga in general, I think is really good for seasonal transitions and good for time changes too, right? Our body gets confused with the time change that occurred this week, or at least my, mine is. Um, just kind of paying attention to the body and moving it in a pleasant way is a nice way to reset. You're welcome to stay here in our spine twist, or you can start to um, bring your right leg, your bottom leg, back towards the wall behind you and see if you can maybe even catch your right foot with your left hand. You are welcome to keep your left leg straight or you can kick it out to the right for an IT band stretch. And maybe one day you could even catch your left foot with your right hand, but it doesn't have to be today. So, but you know, it's called cat pulling its own tail because eventually, right, you could catch your right foot with your left hand. And then from a bird's eye view, it might, I don't know, maybe look like a cat grabbing its own tail, maybe not. Uh, you do not have to touch your hand to your foot today, right? That's not accessible for all bodies. Um, but even just bending that bottom leg back towards the hand, right, can be a nice way to stretch out that bottom quadricep muscle. Holding here for one more minute. about drawing your bottom right heel towards your butt, right? Deepening the stretch towards the end. Inhale. And exhale. Letting that left shoulder fall towards the floor. If your top leg is kicked out and straight, you can start by slowly bending that top leg. Um, and if you've moved your right foot back towards your right hand, or if you have a grip on your foot with your hand, release that grip, bring the right knee back under the left knee. Take your time. Then we're gonna slowly whoo, roll the left hip back down. We're gonna go right to the other side. So rolling to the left this time, right hip stacks on top of left hip, legs can stay bent, try to keep the right shoulder down. Again, you can bend your arms, cactusing like, like wool posts, or you can have them out in a nice big open gesture. Holding here for one minute, breathe. option to stay here in our supine spine twist where we can move meow into cat pulling its own tail. You can start by bringing that bottom leg back towards, um, towards your right hand and maybe bringing that right hand down. So eventually you could catch your left foot with your right hand. Again, think about drawing your heel towards your butt, right? The hand and the foot can also be apart. They do not have to touch, but it's this idea that you're stretching the quad a little bit more. Option to keep the top leg bent or kick it out. You could maybe even catch your foot with your hand, right? You don't have to, but you could still have your hand and foot close together. Try to keep the right shoulder down. And again, this side might feel different. 
and that's okay. Yoga gives us tools to observe our body, to notice any incongruencies or any aches or pains. Yoga gives us the tools to address those congruencies or aches and pains. And yoga also gives us the tools to accept that, you know, one knee might always be tighter than the other. And yoga also gives us the tools to accept that like pain is part of the human experience, right? And we want to get out of pain. We're not rushing towards it, but you know, there are moments in our life where our heart will hurt or our shoulder will hurt. And yoga is giving us tools to kind of like breathe through that pain as well. Again, not, not making it worse than it is, but sometimes just knowing that, you know, right, that's part of being human. And we can look on ourselves with compassion in those moments of hurt, right? Whether it's physical, emotional, psychological, or spiritual hurt, and still be kind towards ourselves, loving towards ourselves, gentle towards ourselves. And by extension, being more kind, loving, and gentle towards other people when they are hurt. You've maybe heard the saying, hurt people, hurt people, or healed people, healing people, heal people. Um, and while I know that another part of the human experience is that will inevitably cause one another hurt and pain, yoga also helps me to step back and, and realize when I am doing harm to others. And um, I think allows me by healing myself to, to hopefully be less likely to hurt others as well. We're going to slowly start to, um, if the top leg, slowly start to transition out, let me finish that sentence. If your top leg is kicked out, you can start by bending that top leg. If you had your left leg, bottom leg back and a cat pulling its own tail shape, you can slowly release any grip that you had with the foot and the hand. Let the knees stack one on top of the other. And then as you're ready, slowly roll your right hip back down to the floor for our final puddle pose. You can Keep your um, knees bent and your feet on the floor. You can straighten your legs. You can grab a pillow for underneath your head or your back or your knees, right? You can grab a blanket for over your body. Take a moment just to get comfortable and then find some stillness. Breathe. Took a great class yesterday on neurodiversity and, uh, and yoga. And it was taught by a yoga teacher who's also been a psychotherapist for 20 years, who is also herself neurodivergent. And uh, which just means like, you know, her brain works a little bit different than, than what we typically think of as like, uh, I don't know, a normally functioning brain. Um, and she's, you know, she described herself as both really neurodivergent and it's really invisible. Like she's, uh, you know, it's hard. It's, you wouldn't necessarily know on the street, but some interesting things happened in the course of, you know, the presentation, which was PowerPoint was like, you know, sometimes she would lose her train of thought or um, words just took her longer to say, um, or, you know, it took everyone a while to like get into the Zoom room because she wasn't quite sure how to do it. Um, but then she taught a yoga class afterwards and it was, fascinating because the, you know, the atypical parts of her brain um, that, for example, make her really interested in certain topics meant that she had like 20 yoga degrees because when she gets interested in a topic, she just like soaks up as much information as possible. And that kind of slowness to her talking, um, which was, you know, at times, frankly, made our presentation go longer than it was scheduled to, at the same time was super soothing for a yoga class because she did have such a like a gentle slow intentional way of getting words out of her mouth um, and I was really reminded that like sometimes in yoga and in life what we think are um, I don't know our hindrances or the things that we don't love about ourselves are actually often like our greatest tools and our greatest assets. And it doesn't always feel that way and it doesn't always pan out that way. Uh, but yesterday's class really drove that home for me. So, you know, whatever it is that feels heavy on your heart or that makes you feel like you don't fit in or you wish you could change about yourself, um, I just invite you to be compassionate and think about like actually how those things that we're sometimes ashamed of or that make us feel different um, are actually the things that are often like the most beautiful and beloved and um, powerful, you know, that each of us holds. Take an inhale through your nose, feel your body rise. 
And then exhale through your nose, feel your body fall. Inhale. And this time, if you'd like, open your mouth. And exhale, letting the exhale be a little bit longer than the inhale. Breathing in. And let the breath out be a little longer than the inhale. Inhale. Exhale. You are so very alive. You are so very unique. And you are so very loved. Stay in your final puddle pose for as long as you'd like. When you do choose to get up, you can get up slowly, mindfully. <laughs> Make sure that you are drinking lots of water throughout the rest of the evening because we did really like stretch our body. So make sure that you're hydrating. Um, have a great night. It's so lovely that the sun is still out. Yay. And I hope to see you all soon. Bye friends.